I uh, received this AM FM radio kit, and I thought I'd uh, make a series, a couple part series, about how it works, how I built it, and how to build it. So, uh, inside this kit, you have an AM FM radio instruction manual, you have a bag, you'll have a PCB that we will be assembling, looks more complex than it really is. And we have our components. This is the FM radio parts. And this is the AM radio parts. As you can see, the AM radio has many more parts than the FM radio. And then we have a stand for this PCB to sit in when we're done with it. Something like that. So we can admire it. Uh, and it even comes with some solder in case you don't have it. It's lead free, so you won't die from it. Just opening this manual, on the first page, you will see all of the AM radio components that are required to assemble this. And then later, on another page, you can find all the FM radio parts. Here's a little warning uh, for the electrolytic capacitors. This black stripe indicates the negative side of it, and uh, if you connect it the wrong way, it might explode or leak. So, let's not find out. Here's a resistor value chart, but I prefer to use this one because it's in color. It makes it a lot easier to follow. That is if you don't already know the uh, color band, the color table. I know most of them by heart, but occasionally ones that I haven't seen in a while I have to use this chart. And now if we flip the page, you will see the introduction, which I will not read as I've already read it and it is slightly boring. Here's the construction, some tips on how to solder. Semiconductor familiarization, I know that. And here's the assembly instructions. Now, up here it tells us to install resistor 43 first, so that's exactly what we'll do. So now we can bring the board to my soldering station and get started. Well, uh, now I just gotta find where R43 is. This could take some time. I found it! After quite a while of looking, it's right here. Yes, I used a red wire so I wouldn't forget where it is, because if I didn't, I'd probably forget where it is. Now we need to find where this is 4 to 3 in this bag. It tells us to only open the AM radio parts bag, I'm assuming, so you don't mix up the FM and AM radio parts. But I just told, I just did what they told me to do when I opened the AM radio parts. Here is the resistors, and um, now I've got to find resistor 4 to 3. Also, um, on the instructions, it tells you that R43 is an 100 ohm, but it also says it right here. Oh, R38 is also an 100 ohm as well, so don't get them mixed up. Got R43 right here. Pop that out of its little holder. Also on the manual, it has little check boxes once you've soldered them in, so I'll be checking those as we go. Turn my soldering iron on, set to 370, and wait a couple seconds for it to warm up. Okay, I bent R43 so the legs can go through the hole here. Insert them in the hole. Carefully push it in without breaking it. And I'm going to bend the legs over so it can't fall out. And there. And now, we can solder it. There. Not too much solder, not too little. warming up the pad now. There. Resistor 1 soldered. Or actually it's resistor 4 to 3 technically. But the first resistor we've soldered. Now we insert test point 2.
capacitor 42, 10 microfarads. Okay, now we can attach this potentiometer. So, it goes in from the underside, like this. We've got to make sure all the pins go into the correct holes. And I'll put the washer on. And the nut. And then we put the knob on. Like so. And then we get to solder these connections. There. All better. Well now it's time to attach this earphone jack here. I've already Use the nut to secure it in place, but these, this manual is very bad at explaining, so I'm having a tough time understanding what I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm just going to hope I'm doing it right, and we'll see when I test it to see if it works. Now we get to attach the speaker. I uh, already got this padding around the speaker, and um, now you just get to peel the other part of it off carefully put it down on top like so nice and stuck not quite centered but it's it's in there I'm noticing the speaker is kind of puny Make another video of an amplifier I add to it to make to make it run with a space speaker or something maybe. Yeah, that would be more way better than whatever that is. I don't even, it's so small. I don't even know if I'd consider it a speaker. Look at this thing. It's like a tiny headphone speaker. Well, it told me to cut three wires, one one inch, another one and a half inches, and and one uh, two inches. Now I just have to strip the insulation off. <laughs> Naked wires. Twist it a little bit so it doesn't fray. And now we can... I can tell you're staring at my finger. It's quite obvious. Just don't get too comfortable around sharp objects. Uh, is it a problem if I'm showing exposed 
naked wires on YouTube? Is that a policy? Well, if I'm correct, the wiring is supposed to be along the line something like this. Negative goes to the ground pad. Positive goes to this part of the jack. And the positive of the audio output goes to this part. I think. You can see I melted the jack a little here when I was soldering it. I guess it was on there a little bit too long. Hopefully it'll work. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, if you happen to be building the same kit, for me, this little 0.1 microfarad capacitor was not included, but, you know, I had extras, so I just pulled one out of my kit and put it here. Hopefully it'll uh, do the trick, so we'll see. Next page! Well, this is the current testing section to make sure everything's working properly on the board. So it says to tell you, it tells you to set your uh, multimeter to read two amps. Well, mine can only read either 500 milliamps or five amps. I'm pretty sure the 500 milliamp fuse is blown. Long story. So I guess we'll just have to use the uh, five amp section. Although it does say it's supposed to draw less than a uh, 10 milliamps. Mm, okay, fine. I'll go with the. Uh, no, I think I blew that one up. Five amps it is. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. I've got a perfectly good power supply here with a working amp meter. Why don't I just use that? <sighs> yes, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, my power supply is on. And it's drawing no current right now, so I'm going to carefully turn this on. Okay, it started drawing 10 milliamps just for a quick second and now it is currently drawing 7. Hmm, alright, that's pretty good. So it's under its rating. Oh, now it's it's gone down to 6. Okay. Well, that's it's under 10 milliamps. That's a good sign. Well, this next section requires a function generator and I, I, I don't have one. I know it's pathetic, isn't it? I have an oscilloscope and power supplies and even a 3D printer, which 3D printer is technically not mine, but I kinda have it. Long story as well. But I don't have a function generator. So I'll have to get one of those soon. Well, I think this will do it for uh, part one of this AM FM radio assembly. I'm actually not sure how many parts this will have, but we'll just have to see. I'll, uh, maybe I'll make I'll have to make my part two once I have a function generator, but that hopefully won't take too long to get. Oh, and yes, also, it might seem like I did all this in one day, but actually this took three days of work. Yeah. So this is a long-ish project, but it'll be exciting. Oh, and also, I have some very secret news to tell you. Okay, so I bought a wind turbine off of eBay for $100, and I don't want anyone else to know. My parents know that, I, of course, I'm not lying to them, keeping any secrets. What, do you think I am, a idiot? Not that stupid. Anyways, I hope I can charge a cool 12 volt battery, and maybe run some interesting applications and circuits that I've made. So, that'll be pretty fun. I think it's arriving on Friday. Hopefully, you never know eBay. It could be coming in two months, or it could be coming tomorrow, you never know. Anyways. Consider subscribing. Bye. See you in the next part of this video.